So last evening was scheduled hatch time for our clownfish larvae. And for the first time out of two attempts, we have clownfish larvae. From all accounts I've read, these larvae seem to be healthy. They're not all just staying at the bottom. None are really staying at the bottom. They're all swimming. You can see them right there. So step one, check. We hatched. So that's huge in itself. There was a lot of preparation that went into this hatch. As you can see, my tank water is extremely green and this is on purpose. This is to provide a tint to the water and I cannot zoom in enough, but this tank is full of rotifers, type L rotifers. And these type L rotifers require this green water for nutrition. Um, if the rotifers don't receive the nutrition, the baby clownfish won't receive the nutrition. The rotifers, as it's been explained to me, are essentially a mode of delivering that nutrition to the clownfish larvae. The rotifers themselves have very, very little nutritional um, goodness I guess if for a lack of better words and when you add certain foods to them it packs them full of nutrition and that's what all these little baby clownfish larvae are eating in there is the rotifers so another reason that the tank is tinted the way it is is that these baby larvae are very, very light sensitive. You can see I have a light set up here. I'm not shining it right on the tank. I'm actually getting very little light in. It seems that there is a balance between enough light in the tank, yet not too much light to disturb them. So what I've been told and what I've read, if you see your clownfish down at the bottom, along the back or anything, all kind of huddled into a dark spot, you have way too much light on the tank. I'm not an expert at this as we've just learned how to do this and we're learning how to do this, but they're hanging out in the light I am providing. So that tells me that the light is not bothering them one bit. So this green tint also helps diffuse light. Long story long. So it is required, it's required for the food for the food, the food being the rotifers and the food for the food being RG Complete from Reed Murray Culture and Rotogrow Plus. I mix the two together. It seems to be working well for the rotifers and I will show you my rotifer station in a second. But uh, the RG Complete also has an ammonia blocker in it, which is helpful when you're adding this much green water to a small tank. I will do a small water change later today to clean up all this stuff on the bottom. I did just take out the large piece of live rock that was in there that the eggs were laid on. So this is just a bit of remnants left over from that. But water changes are going to be mandatory and I'd say they're probably going to be about 20% a day with the fresh water being dripped back into the tank about two drops a second. So I haven't turned the overhead light on. These, this setup is actually in my walk-in closet of all places, but I wanted it a dark, quiet place where nobody was gonna bug them. So while I have a headlamp on, I'm gonna show you a few other things here. I just throw a coat over the front of the tank and the other three sides are already blocked out so that we don't disturb the rotifers, sorry, the clownfish larvae with our extra light. So this is my rotifer setup over here. I have rotifers and I have copepods. I actually got the starter kit from Reed Murray Culture and I got some off of just a fellow hobbyist. Uh, in these two bottles is mostly, co 
mainly copepods, a little bit larger, but we'll use them as the clownfish larvae get bigger. So this is the Reed Mari Culture starter kit. It's very easy to use. I ordered a million rotifers to go with it. Simply disconnect the airline, take the lid off. I don't think you need as tacky as this to do this either, but it works well. Now what all these bubbles tell me is that it's time to feed the rotifers. It is morning, so uh, the rotifers are probably ready for a meal. Uh, they do eat a lot. I put a lot of stuff in here. We'll get some bubbles out of the way here. That's a sign that it needs to be fed, is bubbles in the tank. There we go, we got a little clear patch here. So I'm not sure if... There you go, you can kind of see the rotifers, that's neat. See them all dancing around. This is the food, this is what these clownfish need to eat. So if you're successful with the rotifers, I'd say your chances of success are much, much better with the clownfish larvae. So with the density I have in here of rotifers, I'd say it's safe for me to harvest on a daily basis. And that's uh, what I'm going to do. I'm gonna need these for about the first five days or so of the clownfish larvae's life. Here are the parrots. They're back in the main display tank. No worse for the wear. They never actually came out, but I did have to move their anemone and take a large chunk of rock out that was underneath the anemone where they've been laying the eggs. So one problem I've had is getting the eggs out because it was a huge piece of rock that I literally had to smash with a mallet and chisel. So what I've done is I've put this flower pot underneath the anemone in hopes that that's where they lay their eggs next time and that will be much, much easier to get out of the tank. It would be easier to have just a breeder set up for them, but I'm not there and these guys are real happy in our dining room display tank with a couple other fish. Very, very lightly stocked, makes maintenance on this tank very easy. But I would expect we have eggs again within five days. That's how quick these guys seem to turn over with their eggs. So thank you for watching. I hope you have some success in raising some clownfish babies yourself and hopefully we continue to have success and we're successful through the metamorphosis stage. From us to you, happy fish keeping, and until next time, take care everyone.